All right, so we're on the Easter weekend experience. Uh, we've done our hot cross buns this morning, which were delicious with some melting butter. Yummy. Oh, yeah. Um, and now we aiming for, I was thinking we could even do hot cross buns with some pickled fish on top. How amazing Ooh. will that be? We like a toasted bun with some pickled mm. fish. Yummy. Yummy. All right, so we've got all the ingredients, as you've seen. Uh, I'm going to take you to the finishing of our onion. I like to cut mine in half like that. And then just cut an angle, which we'll do. Um, and then we're going to make a little batter. I like to make a batter with my fish. That's how I was taught how to make pickle fish. Uh, fish is over there. We're using a bit of um, snook. Not snook, sorry. <laughs> egg. Um, and what I've done is I put it through a little brine. And then obviously we've got our friends here, which I've just been reminded that we didn't add them into the picture. So Jenna, who do we have here today? We have Ellie, yeah. Shelby, Pink Rainbow, and Black Bear. Ah, oh, some of and them are... they all eat fish. Oh, I see. Is that why you've chosen them? Yeah. Fantastic. I like the little seal guy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're just going to add the last of our onions. I do about two large onions or medium onions, shall I say. Uh, that should be plenty for what we're looking for. So just to give it some nice thin slices as we work through it. Wow, that's fast. Yeah, you know, it's, we can actually do a nice demonstration on how to uh, chop Cut. and use some knife skills, perhaps. In one of our demos, I think. Okay, so there's the rest of our onions there. We've got a frying pan, so maybe Jenny, if you just want to make your way around, because we're going to start to fry it. Just keep the camera on the actual pan itself. And we're going to then just get everything together. So, got our pan nice and hot already. You always want to hear that lovely sizzle. And in this case, we don't really want to, um, uh, want to, uh, what can I say? Um, let them burn in any way or get too much or color. Fry. We want to keep them nice and see through. Translucent is the big word. And we're just going to move that around in the pan. And I've seen pickle fish made in many different ways, but here in the Western Cape, I think uh, we really do know how to make them well in the sense of it's very much a traditional Easter thing amongst the Malays, Cape Malay people. And I like to call it a traditional Cape Malay pickle fish. And I think I've got it as close as to the real original recipe. Um, so what we're going to put in here now, obviously, if you go back in history, and me being the salt chef, um, I like to focus on dishes that go back in history. And I actually did some work a while back on trying to focus on South African foods, going back to the 18 and 19, early 1900s, using different techniques of salting and preserving. Uh, using things like vinegars and obviously pickled fish is one of those things that people used to preserve this uh, Because they didn't have refrigeration back then so obviously you needed to keep it safe and to pickle it and to cure it and so on So we actually put our fish through a cure or a, a salt brine a 5% solution Which uh, we kept it in there for just over uh, Three quarters of a day and then rinsed it off and then we're going to use that into the batter just now So we want minimal color on there as I said, and I'm going to start to add in things like, um, give it a nice little woohoo shake. Mm. All right, and then we're going to add in, you keep your focus there. What will the pickle fish taste like? Um, it's kind of sweety, sour kind of flavor. It's mm. quite unusual. The vinegar gives it acidity, mm. and uh, the sweetness is again from a little bit of sugar in there. Ooh. Over here, I've got a number of spices, uh, things like a little bit of uh, turmeric, some curry powder. Uh, a little bit of cardamom spice, some cumin, always lacking in there. Uh, we've also got some paprika in there. I've got some amazing, can you smell here? Yeah. Look at that. <gasps> Ooh, lovely. Paprika. <laughs> These are very nice. So These come actually from Madagascar and I did some work over there. I came back with loads of peppercorns and they still got the last batch of mine, which are absolutely amazing. They have much more fragrance to it. And then bay leaves, my worst is when you buy them from the shops, they've been on the shelves for way too long. These have been dried. You can move the camera a little bit for me. Very strong. Spice, yeah. So we're going to put some, um, you don't want to put too many bay leaves on there, but these come from the tree. I dried them myself and you can have a peek here as well. Ooh. Look at those. They just look happy, you know, as opposed to those ones in the... And then we're going to mix all of those spices in there together with that. And we're going to get all those lovely flavors working together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, I mean, this takes a while to cook out and temper. We call it tempering the spice. So you, ooh, cook it. <laughs> cook it I out told you. Got a good whiff there. And that's just going to taste mm, so good. Mm. Um, so we're just going to mix that all in nicely. I like to temper that spice for a short while. Um, it looks a bit like pasta. 
<laughs> it does actually, all stringy, yeah. Yeah. And the onions are the, the amazing part, and then they soak up all that lovely flavor that we're going to get. Mm. So you almost get like a little bit of a crust forming on the base of the pan here. And then we're going to deglaze it, it's a fancy word. We're lifting all that sediment up at the bottom of the pan, and we're going to add in our case right now uh, some vinegar. All right, there it comes. We throw a bit in, and we can always add more. We can remember the flavor is quite uh, intense and strong. And so sour. a dash of water to go with that. And we need a little bit of sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. So sugar, we're just going to give it a good Is this sprinkle. the dressing? Um, it's the seasoning, basically. Yeah. So it basically gives it those flavors that we're looking for. And then we'll come back once we've got all those flavors uh, going, and we then decide, okay, what do we add? Uh, should we add a little bit more acidity? Should we add a little bit more... Uh, sweetness um, and that's how we balance it oh look at that it's just looking so tasty yeah? mm. Mm. all right so we're going to try and do all of this in a little bit quicker steps these days uh, kind of be a bit more clever as we go because we want you to be excited and entertained by this and there we go that's looking so yummy all right so we want to put a bit more water do you know you focused on that uh, cap yep. and not moving all over the place there nope Good. And then we're going to add some more water in there. Okay. Yeah, so we've got this here nicely. Oh, it's hot. It's burning my hand. Can you feel that? The camera getting hot? Yes. I think the dish is so exciting that it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> so hot. Right, so in this part here, I just let this cook out and reduce down quite a bit. I'm going to speed it up a tad bit by just adding something just to bind it. Because what I like about pickle fish is that it must have a nice texture to it. In the sense of, um, I add a bit of corn flour, or corn starch, or mazina, as we know it in South Africa. But, um, I don't have any with me at the moment with this whole lockdown story. We're going to make like a, a flour. Oops, I'm going to have to mix it in nicely. A flour and water mixture. This so kind of looks like granadilla. <laughs> it does actually, yeah. And um, so what happens is the flour and the water mixture is almost like mazina. So when it gets to the boil, it starts to thicken up. And what I like to do is not to make this too thick, but just give it a bit of texture. <laughs> I spilled the beans, yeah. I spilled the beans. Okay, so we're just going to let that thicken up slowly. Again, we'll tweak all those exact flavors towards uh, the end of this. Mm. Um, the next stage that we're going to focus on is actually the um, frying of the fish. And again, as I said, I like to make a bit of a batter. So the oil's on at the back. It's almost done. Um, we've got our... Um, flour in a bowl and I just want to add some water but I'll show you in a second that you can smell all those wonderful flavors that are coming off the pan and will you two focus here please don't be busy yeah okay Jenna I'm gonna move over a bit for me sorry Dad. okay okay so we're <laughs> going to focus on the flour now please I know it's been a long day so add that there. can I mix it yeah sure you can but you must mix it quite quickly because we want that not to be okay. Um, too uh, lumpy or anything and if you don't get it right at first then it can be a bit on the lumpy side so let's add in there all right and of course we just need to get it some salt there in a moment just to add a bit of flat seasoning in there and what I like to do is then I dip the fish in here so it's got like a nice batter to it right mm. and that for me is the best part of pickle fish a lot of people don't add that step in and I think it's like a bit sad Here's my sauce bubbling here, or oh, sorry, our sauce bubbling. Our sauce. Oh yeah. All right, they're all coming together. Oops, no, I'm missing the point here. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we need to. Okay, Jenna, how's your texture? I think we can add a little bit more liquid into there. Okay. 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 Can I help you a sec there? Yeah. Just to get the, the main bits of it together. So this wants to bind this basically. You just mix all that last bit of flour at the bottom there. Yeah, I saw a lot. You see that it's tricky. You've got to be clever and it's all about technique and skill. You know, after incorporating all those wonderful things together. Okay, thanks for holding the bowl there. Okay, give it a nice whisk, whisk through there. Mmm, kind of fish. Yeah. My cool. friend loves fish. Does she? <laughs> Who's that? The seal and all the boys and girls there. Yes. I like to put just a dash of lemon in it because we got it here. I'm going to put it on the fish. <laughs> all right so we're going to pop our fish into there now i think that's good um some of them are sinking some yeah of them no they're great to sing <laughs> they're great to sing what if that has <laughs> gone like really underneath yeah. plastic no no who was it yes Shh, don't tell anybody 
Are you sure? Okay. Yes, I'm sure. I must have sunk in. Okay, so Ooh. what we're going to do is, yeah, Jen, I think you better take control of this okay. camera because I'm moving all over the place. I thought you were bad, but I'm worse. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we've got our fish in there. And what we're going to do now is basically uh, add this into our oil. So we want this little batter to coat our fish nicely. But we mustn't fry the plastic. No, no, no. What plastic? The plastic. Okay, right. I told you. Shh, shh, don't tell the people. <coughs> it's yeah. already been mentioned. I know. Okay. <laughs> so you've got a nice little saltiness. So that's why I haven't added into here. Because that saltiness is um, from the brine already. And all we want to do is coat it. So I normally put the fish through a little bit of a flour uh, dip. But in this case, I think they'll work out really well. And uh, coat that fish up nicely. It just helps the batter stick to the fish a lot more. Um, but I'm quite confident that it's going to be spot on. All right, do you want to quickly have a look at our sauce? Now, that's kind of the texture Ooh. that we're looking for. Not too thin, not too thick. I'm going to pull that off. Now it looks, like, gonna... now it looks like granadilla and pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pull that aside for the minute. And then we're going to bring mm -hmm. the fish into there in a bit. Um, and then the fish will cook as well through there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we've got our oil. As you can see, the temperature is starting to come up to where and we want it to be. stops the steam. You want to taste it? We just show it. Lovely. So what I'll do is throw a little piece of the batter in there. And when it does that, it's actually perfect. Can right. I try? Yeah, just a little a little bit on your finger. Just look at it. <laughs> there we go. Don't let that fish get away, hey? No one that got away. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to pop our fish in there. Careful, always very hot, you know. Whoa, perfect it steams so much, so just a little bit. Yeah. It's amazing the temperatures in there. Obviously, we don't have a temperature gauge on this, but you can just judge more or less. By eyeballing? Uh, a couple, yeah, by eyeballing. And just be very careful and safe because we don't want anyone to burn. Burn, burn, burn. It looks like the pasta is being fried because it's gone all bubbly like pasta. Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. I think you're uh, obsessed with pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly cats, but yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Mm, all right, so we're true. basically then going to continue with this process. And then we're going to add that straight into our mix over here, which I'm going to do in a short while. So I think we can stop for the minute and then focus on the final bits of our pickled fish. This looks delicious. Bye. Mm.